Let's go to the beginning of uh, your career again. You're trained by Hiro Matsuda. And uh, another story that I hear quite a lot is uh, there was also like Florida's version of uh, Calgary's dungeon in the sense that it was just like a snake pit of some of the toughest guys in the world. I mean, I've written some names down. Hiro Matsuda, Bob Roop, J.R. Foley, Jack Briscoe, Bob Backland. Uh, how was your training, essentially, and how did you get out of sort of the whole... It, it, this is the old story of Hulk Hogan getting his leg broken the first five seconds kind of thing. How do you get out of uh, sort of getting your leg broken? How do you sort of get into being trained by Hero and all these other tough guys and getting their respect as well? Well, here's the thing. In, in Florida, Eddie Graham was the promoter and the owner. And Eddie Graham was a strict kayfabe man so far as wrestling. We protected our industry. And we were similar to, and when I make a comparison, a lot of people can understand, we were like magicians. People would watch and say, well, that didn't look real. And then they would see something, well, that looked real. Well, that, that. And then they sat on a fence of whether what was real, what wasn't. But they were never enlightened. So it was always a mystery, and it held that kind of mas mystique for them to come see. So in Florida, I was... Um, I was a young kid that my dad was shot down in Vietnam when I was 13 years old. He was a prisoner of war from the time I was 13 to 21. So I was a kind of a, a young guy that wasn't fatherless, but he just wasn't there to apply discipline. And I grew up in an area that wasn't the greatest in Tampa. It was called Port Tampa, South Tampa. And that's where Hulkster grew up. Mike Graham grew up. Um, Dennis McCord, who later became Austin Idol, grew up. Dick Slater. We all grew up as little kids together. So we all came out of that same era, but, but Eddie liked me because I think it was more sympathy that my dad was, you know, sacrificing his freedom for our country in a war. And so he offered me opportunities to go fishing and hunting and everything. And when Mike and I were growing up, he didn't raise me, but he kind of mentored me too, to the point where, you know, he never enticed me with wrestling. But he gave me opportunities to pick guys up when I first started driving at the airport, driving them around, bringing them to the matches. So I knew a lot of the talent. I knew big stars and drove them around. And I, I really wasn't interested in being in the wrestling business because they always looked beat up. I mean, you know, when you saw them up close and personal after the matches, you're going, oh, my God, I don't Usually you don't look too good. And then and, and, so, you, and you said, sorry to interrupt, and you said in your book as well that some of the old timers they couldn't like stretch their arms out properly because of all the elbows they were dropping. Oh, there were so many different things in there that kept me from being interested, like body problems, I mean, aches and pains, limited motion and and, and old injuries and, and medicine wasn't that great in the early seventies and so things hadn't developed like your acl tear i mean you'd had to retire and get a cane yeah. <laughs> nowadays you can fix it well back then i mean you know i noticed all these things and so i mean i was only 165 pounds when i graduated from high school so i wasn't like a huge guy i'm six foot tall so i'm not like a monster standing there and all the guys in the wrestling business were big men at that time now they were big barrel chested but big guts i mean you know they were just um, husky men. And so I, I wasn't really enticed by it. But then I went to college because that was what my mom wanted me to do. She wanted me to graduate from college. Nobody in our family had ever graduated from college. So I went to college, but I, I had no idea what I wanted to be. Everybody kept saying, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I go, I don't know what makes the most money. And so it was nothing that ever came up about pro wrestling. Then I went away to college and I got on um, steroids in college and went from 165 to 240, came home and Eddie looked at me and goes, oh my God, what what have you been doing? You know, and I said, I've been power lifting. And he said, have you thought about wrestling? And I said, not really, you know, and I kind of explained to him, said, I admire you guys, but I mean, you know, I, I kind of like being cute. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to end up looking like Abdullah the Butcher or King Curtis. Anyway, so when, it, when he started me out, I, I had lost all my drive to, for education. I just couldn't focus. And so I just said, well, let me give it a try. And when I first started, and of course, I went to the Sportatorium is where they film TV and it's, it's a hundred degrees in the shade there. And then there's no air conditioning. There's no ventilation. There's a ring light in there. And then 
just the tension and the nervousness. You're, you're instantly sweating when you walk out there. And then you're thinking in the back of your mind, well, they're going to show me these moves and nothing's going to hurt. And I'm going to land on a bed of feathers and all this. And all of a sudden I get this wake up call and now I'm doing free squats to a deck of cards and I'm doing neck bridges and I'm doing sit-ups and I'm doing all these push-ups. And now I'm wrestling Hiro Matsuda. My sister could beat me by the time I'm ready to start. And he's jamming my face in the mat and hooking me. And back then there was no tap out. It was scream, I quit. <laughs> and so I quit a lot of times. And I'd come home to my mom and my mom would look at me and she'd go, man. She goes, I thought wrestling was fake. And I go, so did I. But I had this <laughs> doubt. And now I'm convinced whatever everybody else is thinking isn't right. But the initial idea and the psychology of Eddie Graham was to build a respect for the industry and to protect it. And that's what we were taught in Florida. We were taught that if anybody challenged you and said, wrestling's fake, you said, okay, come on outside. Let's see who comes back in. And then, you know, you just had to, you had to face every challenge you had to no matter whether it was in a bar or on the street or in a mall or whatever you had to make sure you established you weren't going to take people insulting you about that business so that's how i started i started that six months of that i wanted to quit i, I thought about quitting the only thing i could think of is i better move out of the state if i quit because i'll be a too embarrassed to face eddie but then I finally stuck it out. And when I when I made it to the point where they said he'll protect the business, that's when they changed and taught me to work. 